With the current state of trials and all competitive modes in PvP, there will be a time where you face a team that no matter how passive or aggressive you play, you still can't defeat them as they're just that good, and it happens to the best of us. We can take these beatings as a lesson in life where not everything is fair, and we just have to keep trying our best to deal with it, but not ever give up. I've come across many moments like these and I've always taken a break if it becomes too much for me. I also use my experience to find ways to build around certain players and playstyles so the outcome isn't always that bad, and this is what I got for you today. A simple but elegant build that will allow you to play safe in your own manner but also push enough aggression on the enemy team to where if a single grenade hits them, it will end them tragically. I would like to call this build the counter of all things annoying, as you'll see what I mean, and has loads of room for improvements for players on a different map, etc. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then do leave a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. To start with the subclass, we'll be using Code the Commander to make use of the Void Detonators via our Special Grenades and to cause as much chaos and issues for the opposing team. The idea is to make full use of the combos when the opposing team are near each other and to then cause as much grief to them to the point that they separate out and allow us easy pickings. Code the Commander, although more PvE orientated, is actually fully flexible in PvP as well considering how close everyone sticks near each other and how easy one Void Detonator can turn into multiple at once. The Resupply perk and Controlled Demolition subclass perk will be the two most relied upon perks that will help you sustain your Chain Void Detonators efficiently. Controlled Demolitionist allows any of our abilities such as melee or grenades to stick a detonator onto a target which upon hitting multiple times will detonate and kill said target even on full health. However, we can also spread said effects onto others if they stay near the explosion as well, which will either outright kill them as well or cause them to be affected by said detonators as well. On top of this, the resupply perk will give us and our teammates health, melee and grenade energy back as well upon success. This here is something I don't see a lot of PvP players in general try and use in the competitive scene so often as it can put a lot of pressure onto those hit by it. On top of that, if they are suppressed as well then they become pretty much useless for everyone until the effects go. This has been a very interesting setup that works well in 3v3 content as avoiding them can be 50-50 at times. If you mess up and get hit, then of course you can wait it out, but this will also mean that their team will be down by one player, so the risk of getting touched by it is literally life or death. Now for weaponry, I've gone with a fusion hand cannon setup that hits hard on all angles and is a great counter to the majority of players I face. One example of this is using the Bastion fusion rifle to one shot multiple players, take out super users, or take out barricade slash rift users all in once. Diffusion is great for causing as much salt as possible against some players and it hits equally as hard as many players would expect. Although nerfed quite a while back, it still retains that superiority feel to it, capable of shutting down anyone that gets in his way, but also being capable of taking out anyone else that decides to walk past it before running out of ammo. Thanks to it being a free burst weapon, stack rift users tend to be a thing of a pass at times as a full hit from it can easily one shot them. The same can be said to those that use barricades to block doorways or use their roaming supers, etc. The Bastion is the pinnacle of a shutdown weapon that, for trials, is a must have for all scenarios. My secondary is the Igneous Hammer Adept with Killing Wind and Elemental Capacitor and this has been one of the most best weapons to use in all PvP maps you play in. It has superb range, damage, stability and pretty much everything that I ever wanted in a hand cannon. Now I'm not a big fan of hand cannons in general for PvP as I can never get my aim to correct itself and follow up on my shots well, but over time I've gotten the hang of them and then finally found a weapon that feels really good to use. I would recommend you try and get a version like this as the damage buffing perks are great but are 50-50 to activate at times. Elemental Capacitor I found tends to be a really handy perk as you can use it however you like depending on the subclass being used. As I'm currently using Void, I'm getting a major stability buff to the weapon stats, which for me on console I found to be extremely handy for following my shots while under fire. Although 120s are slow, they do still pack a punch and are capable of free tapping players at mid range. This is probably one of the best 120 hand cannons to use if you want something smooth but hard hitting. Now for heavy, I won't even bother cover this area as we won't be using heavy at all within the build like usual, so the choice is down to you. For stats, focus as much effort into your resilience, discipline and intellect area as these will be the key three areas of full use for everything you do. As I forget to mention, we are using the Cytons Ramper Exotic to allow us to shoot for our barricades which will help me and my team out. 
Although this will severely weaken my bad case overall, it will come in handy for surprising them and easily getting my grenade through to an area that they at least expect it. For this, you want your resilience to be aimed at 70 for a steady regenerative time, while also utilising the utility kickstart mod and distribution mod for further assistance. With all these, you should be able to get your class ability back up within a few seconds after first use. For your discipline, try and aim for 70 plus as you won't have a lot of mod support for this area. Although we have discipline mods, momentum transfer, distribution and our resupply subclass perk, these are all you're going to get so it will be wise to try and be as accurate with your grenades as possible, unless you change one of your weapons to have the diminishes perk. The same can be said for your intellect at 60 which won't have any other support except from the armor stats themselves since we can't add in ashes to assets or hands on for that extra super energy. Once again, if you're happy to sacrifice your targeting mods, like shown, for one of these super mods, then go ahead if you're happy to follow this through. Otherwise, just try and get your stats as high as possible, from your end, through the armor stats alone. Now, as we've covered the main topics of setup we are using, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For head, we have discipline and hand cannon targeting mod. Arm, we have recovery, momentum transfer and fastball mod. In chest, we have minor recovery and unflinching hand cannon times 2 mod. A leg with intellect and fusion scavenger mod, mark with intellect, utility kickstart, and distribution mod. As previously mentioned, going to trial solo can be 50 50 at times and either work out in your favour or go completely the opposite from there. This doesn't have to be the case all the time though, as staying near your teammates and understanding maps will be key to surviving long matches ahead. For this, it's always wise to invest a bit of time into your setup and try to come to an agreement of what works out well for you. I know not a lot of players enjoy creating builds in PvP as they prefer to rely on weapons than abilities to survive, but I believe creating something that suits your player style can go a long way. It's a passive build for those that have a passive playstyle and don't want to invest too much into stat distribution or using meta weapons. The idea setup will allow players to peek dangerous corners while still having a chance to fire back and be protected via sightings, while at the same time allow players to set up the avoid detonators that can spread their effects and cause even more chaos if one of them pops and they will also be suppressed if our grenade detonates near them, placing them in a timeout situation until they recover. A simple yet powerful build that placed in anyone's hand can easily cause team wipes and this is something I'm surprised I don't see many players use or try to utilise. Think about it, the build is offering you both protection, suppression and continuous pressure onto the other team which will reward you and your team if you manage to defeat their players affected. Although top tree is more beneficial as you can utilize bubble once the tiebreaker flag appears and can protect your team from further harm, middle tree still offers the best of both worlds. You also have to take into consideration the super being used as well, which can allow you to absorb a lot of damage against those that try to push, but also protecting you and your team and giving your team an extra damage boost upon firing through it. This everybody is great for small teams as you don't need to worry so much about teams rushing you or trying to escape, as either way you look at it, they're going to get taken down one way or another. Now think about how powerful the build can be if you have a stag warlock and another titan with a setup or a hunter with a high intellect for their shutdown super. You'll pretty much own the map you're on and become unstoppable if done correctly. Of course, until shadow dive gets adjusted and dew marches don't tag me from here all the way to Antarctica, there are still going to be many ways for players to counter you. On top of that, you'll have one grenade to make full use of, so if you miss, which you will, you'll be out of grenades for a while, unless you heavily spec into your discipline area. For those that are playing trials alone or with a team and you want to support your teammates through the best method available, try this fantastic build out as you could put in a lot of work through a simple grenade, a barricade or a bastion or two. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.